Hey, uh, new center. How is that going in terms of the first couple reps of OTAs? How are you getting used to his cadence and 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 Corbett running running the offensive line? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a little bit of transition there. I mean, obviously, I think in an offensive line group, it's really the five guys you're kind of used to working with, and and uh, I think so. Corbett kind of sliding there and being somebody we've worked with in the past and had to communicate with. Um, pretty seamless as, as far as that stuff goes. I mean, you're not getting a lot of crazy uh, stuff going on that's really going to be difficult this time of year uh, with that kind of thing. So it's more technique work and kind of working on the basics of probably for him of, of learning the center position and those kind of things. So uh, just trying to help where I can there and, and uh, you know, help him on his process to, to play in that position. And then a transition to a new offensive line coach in, in Carberry. Uh, what's that been like after working with Omar for so many years? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, Carbs has come in, and uh, I think Coach Carberry's, you know, doing his thing to kind of fill us out and, and what we know and don't know. And and then also, oh, you know, for him being a part of this offense, you know, maybe understanding, you know, I think for him, it's, it's he's kind of learned it from Sean and then uh, transferring to us the information and then also kind of figuring out, hey, what what is it that these guys have a good hold on? What do they not have a good hold on? And, um, you know, what are things that we need to work on? I think, you know, there's almost like a feeling out process of, of time together where it's like, hey, here's some things we're going to check and see if we can where we are with these things and him kind of getting to know us and what it is that he can help us with and and so vice versa, same thing, us getting to know him and, and what it is that he can help us with. Thanks, Wood. Nick Hamilton. Hey, Andrew. Uh, how important is it just to have to build that, that synergy and the chemistry this early uh, as you guys continue to move forward and prepare for the upcoming season? I think it's really important this time of year, really, um, you know, for guys to, uh, you know, really hone in on what they need to do well and and uh, their techniques, uh, the what they see, what they understand, what they don't know, um, kind of finding those things that where they could be better and, and they might have something that they haven't done as good in the past, finding a way to be better at that. I mean, I really think the off season time to me, I mean, it's obviously really good to be together and to have some time where we get to get out on the field and take some snaps and just have that camaraderie time. I think that that's uh, when you love this game, you love getting out on the grass and just being together, doing some drills and things. But it's really about that individual mentality of, you know, what can you do to get better and be ready for the season? I can remember Anthony Munoz when I was in Cincinnati, uh, you know, was somebody I leaned on a lot as a mentor of mine and, you know, one of the greatest to ever played the game. And, and uh, you know, he used to always tell me, like, man, the off season is, is, is the time to be selfish. And, and what he meant by that was that it's the time to really hone in on what it is that you do and, uh, and really you know, fine tune those skills so that when you get together in camp, when you get together in the season, it's really about executing football. Uh, you don't have to spend all your time on those things. And so I think it's important this time of year, guys are really focused on locking down the techniques and fundamentals it takes to play this game. And you spoke earlier about the effectiveness of communication between yourself, the line, obviously the, the O-line coach, and now you have a new quarterback in Matthew Stafford. So how is that communication coming about? Um, and where do you where do you want it to be as far as by the time the season uh, starts to begin? Yeah, I think we'll really have checked off a lot of like communication things. I think that, um, you know, really for, for a new quarterback, it's like learning how they say certain words, learning how they communicate the snap count, um, just little things that you'd never think of or you, you're, you're, you don't realize how much of a robot you are when it comes to a lot of those things. You're so used to the way somebody speaks or says a word that uh, it's, you know, you, you realize this is really the, the gun point or the snap point for us is, is his, his terminology and how you may say a word or how fast you may say a word. It's just really how fast you get off the ball. So, I mean, all those type things take a little time to get used to, but that's why this time has been so valuable. It's really the best thing as linemen we can technically get out of this time is really just that, just learning the, the quarterback's rhythm, his cadence, how he communicates things, um, learning to figure out him and kind of when to anticipate uh, the snap might come or when he might when to anticipate when he's about to snap it and those kind of things. Um, just those little nuances that you really want to kind of have down before you go to camp so that when you get into live play and pads and all that, you're just working on executing plays. You're not working on the silly things that, you know, really shouldn't have a problem in the season. Thanks, Andrew. Kevin Moore. Hi, Andrew. Um, you're about to do something that uh, not too many 
guys try, which is play uh, pro football at age 40. Um, was there a decision to be made uh, and what went into it to keep going for uh, at least another, another year? Um, really, it's just kind of one of those things that, uh, as I've, I've keep setting, uh, saying, like a, like a repeating uh, song, that I'm, I'm going to take a year and just uh, a year by year and think about it after the season. And usually I don't think very long. So uh, one of these days when I'm not thinking for, for – when I'm, I'm spending some time actually thinking about it, y'all have to get nervous. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I played well and I had a really good year going and unfortunately got injured and, uh, you know, really felt like, you know, probably one of the best stretches of football I've played and, and um, uh, was feeling good about my season and, and had an unfortunate injury but was able to kind of make a – uh, I don't know, miraculous is the word, more like a, maybe a little foolhardy comeback and then try to play uh, a little bit in the playoffs, which is really just an amazing experience. But that kind of knew – I knew when I had that much hunger to get back on the field um, that I wanted to still play football. And so as soon as I realized in the offseason that, you know, rehab and all those things had gone really well and we felt like we were in a great spot, um, I knew I wanted to play the game, you know, mentally and in my heart. And so it was a pretty easy decision um, as far as that goes. And obviously my family and stuff's always behind that. And, and uh, we just reassess after every season and, and uh, get after it. So we're looking forward to the unique opportunity we have this season. It was nice of the schedule maker not to have you play on your birthday. Uh, you play on a Monday that week. And I think your birthday is on a Sunday, correct? Uh, or would you have liked to be playing uh, in the NFL on, on your 40th birthday? Yeah, you know, I, I I definitely would not have wanted it to be a Thursday night game. I would rather have, like, if I'm going to do it, I would like to be 40 when I played it. So, uh, yeah, I, you know what, Monday, Sunday, it's all good. But, um, yeah, that, that you know, if we get there and we have that opportunity, uh, you know, it would be a really cool feat. I mean, honestly, just playing my 16th season is, is the first thing to check off, and, and I can't wait to walk out week one and uh, just the journey it is to get to even that. So, uh, I, I, you know, I take it step by step, and, and I'm looking forward to this season and excited about it. You mentioned your family. We remember last year speaking with you about what, your, what you and the rest of your family went through with COVID. Um, is everything okay with everybody now, back to normal, or...? Yeah, yeah, everybody's doing really well, and and uh, everybody seems to be good, and and uh, plugging right along, and you know all the adults as far as uh, us have been vaccinated, and um, we're kind of plugging along. You're including your father-in-law, correct? Yeah, yeah, everybody. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. Thank you, Stu Jackson. Hey Andrew, I'm I'm curious how the uh, off-season workouts in your home garage turned gym are uh, going it looks like you've got i think most of the the starting guys and maybe some of the reserves basically most of the returnees working out with you what's that experience been like and what kind of inspired you to sort of foster that camaraderie and have everybody work together in that setting and capacity well i mean really uh you know um <laughs> unfortunately covid but uh you know I, last march really when things started to kind of seem like we were going to get shut down i i kind of party started in, in late february um, accumulating some equipment and uh, realizing that I was probably going to have to work out from the home and then uh, proceeded to have a conversation with the wife and, and convinced her that it doesn't rain much in California so she can park outside and uh, that 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 was probably the biggest uh, holding point of, of everything so once I once I convinced her she could park outside and, and it wouldn't rain on her because she's coming from Louisiana she's used to getting rained on every day um, you know, it, uh, it was pretty seamless. We, I started acquiring equipment and, and, and then I started inviting guys and be like, Hey, listen, I know we're all here. Um, and you know, really, I would say last year, we probably had seven to eight guys that trained every day in the off season, uh, in the gym. And then this year, um, I think we have every single guy except for the rookies, uh, that have just been drafted or uh, picked up or whatever. And so really th those, that side of that, all the veterans are there. So it's, uh, it's been fun on these last few weeks, just all being together and, having two different workout groups and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, the gym has, has grown, uh, over, over the last year and a half substantially. We got all kinds of, all kinds of nicks and crannies and, and little gadgets everywhere in every corner and every, uh, cabinet I can find is stuffed with some kind of equipment that we use. So it's, uh, it's, it's really been fun and, and, and kind of a neat, neat thing. I mean, it's something I never would have thought I'd do in my career. You know, I mean, I've always trained, you know, either at a gym or at a high school or at a facility somewhere, 
um, you know, for the last year and a half now, almost two years really training in our house is, uh, has been unique. Jordan Roderick. Hey, Whit, what's up, man? Good to see you. Hey, you too. Um, do you have a name for the garage yet? Did you guys nickname it? You know, we've gone back and forth a bunch. Most of the guys just call it the dojo right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just, we do everything in there, train, yoga, you name it, you know, all our, all our instructors, different people we use. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, everybody's kind of invested. Some of the guys bring cleaning equipment. Some of the guys pay for like somebody to come clean it time to time. Um, you know, it's just it, it kind of everybody's involved and invested in it, and, and that's made it uh, unique. It's it's created a really special bond between us, and um, it's it's been a lot of fun. And then, did you have someone come in and like help you design it, or was this just out of the mind of Whitworth? You know, bringing in. Yeah, I, I really kind of just took things I know we'd need, everything from squat racks to, to you know weight benches, all that stuff, dumbbell racks. You know, we got all the dumbbells and racks that we really would have here. Um, and then most of the cardio equipment that we'd use in the weight room, probably more than really the, the, the weight rooms equipment, because we've kind of got a couple extra little gadgets because we don't necessarily have a field. So, um, we have, we have plenty of cardio stuff and, you know, and then I, I, uh, obviously work out outside the box sometimes. So I've got all kinds of gadgets and different things that we use to, to, to work on mobility or strengthening and all that. So it's, uh, there's, there's nothing you can't do there. I'll put it that way. So we, we can do it all. And, um, I think that that's kind of what's important to me is really that healthy balance of, of being able to lift and work on mobility and keep your body healthy. And, and uh, we try to do that with all the guys. And, and I think that they, they realize that when they come, how special it is. And, you know, my trainer, Ryan Sorensen uh, has done a tremendous job with the guys. And I think they all really realize that when they come and, and I've enjoyed working out and training with him. And then last one for me, um, and thanks for your patience. Uh, I remember before the season ended, we talked a little bit about, the injury and moving into a, an off season where I think everybody across the league was doing some financial maneuvering. And you mentioned, um, we were very forthcoming about the fact that you knew that, you know, being injured and then deciding to come back and play, you may have sacrificed some of your negotiating power in a sense. Um, what was that like for you? And when you get to the contract, that wasn't just a simple like auto convert, what was that process like for you? Uh, I think it was one of those things where, you know, you, you know how well you played, you unfortunately got injured. So, but life's that way. I mean, you don't always get everything your way and, and uh, I've had plenty go mine. So I, you know, it was no complaints there. It's just frustrating. So, um, you know, really you get to, to sit down and say, Hey, look, let's try to make this work for everybody. And there's a couple of things that are important to everybody. And um, obviously number one was that they really wanted me back. And, and, and really two is obviously that I want to be back. And so, um, you know, so I think that really was a good place to start from. And, and we kind of figured it out from there, you know, it's like, it's like one of those things where, you know, you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out how to fit yourself in the salary cap. And, you know, at the same time, I'm joking, like, Hey, look, if I stayed healthy, I'd be asking you guys to double my salary. So, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, but unfortunately I didn't. So here we are, let's figure it out. Right. So it's, uh, that, those things are always interesting because it really just comes down to being able to have the ability to put a little bit of emotions to the side and say, Hey, you know, what, what's important to you guys, what's important to me. And, and let's find a way if we both want this to happen um, to, to make sure we get, you know, a contract that you like and, and an opportunity for us to move together, you know, forward for a year, because, you know, really the team's in the same boat that I am and that at my age, you know, you, you have to kind of do this thing yearly. And so every contract signed, no matter what it looks like is really a yearly deal between both of us. And so it's one of those things that we, we ironed it out and, Everybody feels good about it, and uh, I look forward to the opportunity to go out and play. Thanks, Andrew. Claudia? Hey, Andrew. Good afternoon. You're getting ready for another season. I know you have talked about you have been working hard in the off offseason. Um, do you have to be more observant with your diet and exercise routines? Well, I'll put it this way, Claudia. I'm old enough. Every time I DoorDash and Taco Bell, I feel it. Okay, so I uh, my joints know what happened. I can assure you that. But uh, no, yeah, I mean, I do have to. I, I'm pretty. I, I don't give myself much credit there, probably, but I do. I, I, during the week when I'm training, um, yes, I'm very, very uh, aware of really what I'm eating, how I'm how I'm doing things. I would actually say though, in the off season for me, typically. 
I'm a little more lenient than really in season. So in season, because it's more of a daily grind and every day there's football involved because weight training doesn't really truly, if you do it correctly, put a, a ton of stress on things that really I would say would, would cause injury or any of that kind of stuff if done the right way. But, but football is a whole other animal because you're in positions that aren't always good sometimes on the field and there's a lot of stress there. So daily, it's more important to me in the season that really my diet, my regimen, is pretty locked in to where my body should know almost every hour what what's going on as far as when we're going to eat, you know, when we're not eating, when we're fasting, any of that type of stuff. So out, off season, I would say I eat pretty clean and, and train pretty well. And on the weekends, I kind of eat what I want and to some extent. And, uh, you know, I, I try to do my best to feel good, but my body definitely knows it when, uh, you know, I eat a couple uh, bean burritos or soft taco Supremes, that's for sure. And last one for me, um, you have watched and worked with Matthew Stafford. Does he seem bothered by his thumb at all? Uh, no, he seems great. He's, uh, you know, feeling good and doing great. And, and uh, I think it was a pretty, you know, simple thing that he had, you know, he had going on and got fixed. And so um, he's, he's fired up, you know, he's, you can tell he's uh, been around this game a long time and, and understands what's needed and, and what's expected. And so uh, I think he's fired up and having fun. Thank you so much. Hey, I might have muted myself by accident. Sorry. But we can we can wrap up with Gary, Greg, and Lindsay. Uh, hi, Andrew. Hey, um, you had mentioned uh, you know that uh, Anthony Munoz said this was the time to be selfish and and work on you know, what you need to work, what you need to work on in the off season after so many off seasons, what, what, if anything, are you focused on specifically um, for yourself uh, in terms of improving as you head back to training camp? I think for me, it's really at my age, it's, it's about uh, making sure I'm moving properly and, and keeping things, you know, when you get older, especially as a lineman, just because of a lot of our work is really done in a box or, or powerful and, and not as much running and moving around as other positions. Um, you know, you can start to lose mobility. You can start to really kind of develop habits that are kind of, uh, you know, maybe not as, as, as efficient as you'd like to be, you know, just because you may be trying to hold, hold, you know, get through an injury or get through something that's bothering you joint wise. And, and so you start kind of playing a certain way. And so for me in the off season, I really try to look at the tape and, and evaluate myself and say, all right, here, here's some things that I think I could move better doing. And, um, you know, even for instance, like the year before, um, have an ankle surgery. I mean, seeing what a difference it made, you know, my ability to bend and move and, and, and really in the run game and everything else last year, it was a significant difference in the really the way I was putting my body in really good positions and stuff. And so definitely something that made a huge difference for me last year going into the season and, and playing well in those first nine games. And then, you know, so this year it's no different. It's finding little things that I think I could be a little better at and making sure I have the mobility I want in certain positions. So learning to really train through some of those body positions that are uncomfortable for a big guy um, and focusing on some of that as, as well as lifting and everything else. So, you know, I, I try to find those things and also obviously always trying to find that uh, healthy medium of, of, of being strong, but also being lean. Um, because I, I definitely believe, you know, at, at an older age, the more weight I'm carrying, the harder it's going to be on my body. So um, always trying to play with that a little bit and find, find the little spots where I can be in a good groove and feel good about playing ball uh, at the weight I am. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, with the addition of um, Stafford and some other moves you, you guys have made, you kind of become, again, the darlings, I think, of the, of the going into the season, the people picking you guys as a possible Super Bowl contender. Um, just curious from your perspective, you know, how this compares maybe like 2018 when you guys went into that season and, and what are some of the pitfalls that you have to be aware of, you know, when you have that many expectations going into a season? Well, I think, I think the good thing is, is when you get used to playing and being expected to do stuff, um, you know, I, I think that you can get in a good groove of just knowing what winning football is like. And I think that's one thing the coaching staff here, you know, really top to bottom, um, you know, it does a great job of is, is like there's only certain ways we'll do things. And and uh, and that's in a winning way in the sense of how we break cuddles, how we do 
little things like jogging back and forth to wherever our position groups are, where we're working. I mean, there's all these little things that just you, you go watch a winning football team. That's how they practice. It's how they prepare. Um, and I think we're in a great groove in that and, and nothing ever gets kind of let up on in that in that requirement. And then being, you know, mentally sharp and being great communicators. I think that's something that um, we really put a lot of onus on and, and a lot of guys realize that that's that goes a long way into being a good football team. And so um, I think for us, it's really just continuing to make sure that we're sharp in the areas that we need to be and, and realize that, you know what, it's it's uh, you don't get to start from ahead. You know, you got to win all these games one by one. And, and so it's going to take a really sharp, crisp football team that uh, has a great operation to be able to be successful. And we know that and we, we have that expectation for ourselves. We're not a team that's saying we're going to be that this year. We're going to find a way to find it. We've been there and we've got some guys that have been out there and done it or they've got tape uh, of us uh, wearing those helmets doing it. And so I think guys start to feel good about it. I mean, I look at last year, uh, how seamlessly you go to Seattle and win again in the playoffs. And then I think in Cincinnati, you know, of how many years in a row we went and uh, we're really good in the regular season, but never found a way to be that team in the playoffs. I mean, that was a pretty seamless thing that to me, that was a culture type win. That was, we didn't go into that game with any expectation other than a win. And it really didn't matter whether it's the playoffs or the next game on the schedule. And uh, I think that that's really where you start to see a, a culture and a franchise that just expects to win. And hopefully we can keep that mentality and, and that culture strong. Hey, Whit, uh, you were just talking about the Bengals. And I was, I was thinking you actually have a lot in common with Matthew Stafford in terms of the way you got to the Rams, a long career with a Midwest team that had some good seasons, some bad seasons, but never won a playoff game. Have you gotten to know him well enough to know if that's the mentality he's taking into here that you, that you took in here and, and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. He's already enjoyed some good days at Soho Malibu. And uh, you know what? Uh, I, no, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, it, it, the reality is, is uh, yeah, exactly that, though. I'm not kidding. Is that when you come from the Midwest and, and you come here, I'm, I'm sure he's enjoying some California weather and the setting and, and just uh, being excited to be here. And uh, it's probably made a run or two down to Malibu, my guess, with all those kids. So, um, you know, I think it's one of those things that it can be invigorating to you to almost if you, if you really look at somebody like him similar to my situation he played for a really long time for one team um in the midwest and in a place where he was really the guy and uh the leader everything else and so it's almost uh invigorating and also ner a little nerve-wracking to come somewhere else where there's an expectation and so for him there's going to be this expectation of how he'll play and i think that uh it almost like fires you up and makes you feel like a rookie again just in a sense of getting drafted high and feeling like hey people are relying on me to come in and play well. And I don't know a lot of the guys in the locker room. And I think that his mentality is as similar to mine was. And, and uh, that's why I think he'll be great. I mean, he's the natural leader and he's a guy's guy. And he just, he, you know, you can tell that um, he, uh, he loves where he is and he's having fun and he's excited for the opportunity. What do you see from him on the practice field so far? Obviously, it's early, but, you know, you're tight with Jared. Jared's a good quarterback. What What do you see from Matthew? And can you see the differences that this offense is going to have because there's a new quarterback? Well, I yet? think every every quarterback has their skill sets and different things they're good at. And, and also, and I've always said this about young quarterbacks, right? There's this new expectation all of a sudden in the last few years that these guys have to play at a certain standard in their first three, four, five years. And uh, I call it a little bit of the Patrick Mahomes effect, right? So because he's so effective and has had so much success, it's like we forget that, I mean, how many of these quarterbacks that you can go that even the legends were, were that good in their first three or four years or were they playing on teams that had tremendous defenses? Um, they weren't really putting the ball in their hand. They were running offenses. I mean, you know, all those type things. I mean, I, you know, even your guys from Aaron Rodgers to Carson Palmer to whoever else, like, didn't necessarily play their first season and like light it up or whatever. And so I think it's one of those things you really look, these quarterbacks are expected to play so well, so fast. And one of the things that Stafford definitely has that Jared just, there's nothing he could have had at this moment is experience. And, and when you've played, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 years, you, you've gotten in a groove where how many coverages is there really that you haven't seen multiple times and played against multiple defenses 
and had a lot of experience playing different coverages, different routes into those coverages. And so it's just that experience. And, and I think it's one of those things you can tell with him, the way he carries himself, the way really we do things. He, he understands all the little nuances of things that there's just no way you can have those without the time in the game and without the experience. This is no different than myself at this stage of the game, teaching the young guys how to play. It's There's just there's things that they just aren't going to do as well until they have the chance to be in the moment and feel it and do it and do it bad and fix it. And I think that's one of those things you can tell with staff is that he's a heck of a talent, obviously, to be drafted where he was. But also, he's got that time where he he understands what it takes to play this position at a high level. Hey, Andrew, um, kind of actually a little bit along those lines uh, of young guys. In your experience, where do you see young running backs um, make some of the biggest leaps um, over their first couple seasons or after their first season, maybe? Well, I think, you know, really it's a mixture of things. One is being able to be on the field more often. I mean, you think of a lot of young backs, especially in this league, you know, uh, people think, oh, you rotate them a lot. But the reality is they probably keep them out of a lot of plays where they may be in protection a lot or they may have responsibilities in, in blitz packages and different things that, that you know, it's like, man, we don't, we don't know if this kid understands it enough to like protect the quarterback if, if it's a situation where he's got to put his nose in there and, and be that guy. And so, you know, I think that in general across the league, you see a lot of that. They may be taken out in certain situations at a game um, when they might be skill set wise, somebody you'd love to have in there. But the truth is you just got to make sure they know what they're doing because sometimes it can get complicated for those young backs just because it's uh, totally different playing at this level and the defenses and the different things you get. And so I think for young backs, it's really that it's understanding the game schematically and all of that um, as far as as far as the pass game goes. And then also, you know, not having to have certain plays that they can run because they may not understand the whole playbook. And so really, to me, you know, when you got a young, talented back, the ability to have them out there more often um, and with more of the more of the playbook available to them. Um, I think that's when you really see them take that leap is that now they can run the whole playbook. There's not certain plays that they like, especially as a rookie back, you know, there's only certain plays you're putting them in in practice because it's like, all right, you know, mentally they can handle this or they can handle this situation. Now it's like, you know, you get them second year, third year, it's like they can hold, handle the whole playbook and we can really let their skill set shine. And obviously it's very, very early in the, in the off season or going into a second season, but for Cam Akers, um, have you noticed any kind of change for him so far this summer? You know, I think the thing with Cam is that you realized early on and, and really would have said before he even kind of went on the run he did there at the end of the season is that he's really wired the right way. I, I'll never forget even before I got hurt, um, you know, just being in, in the time I had with him in the huddle and those kind of things. Um, you know, really getting a feel for his personality and, and, and how he's wired. I mean, you knew he's different. And, um, you know, he's, he's one of the few backs I've been around that, you know, has enough to, to run a play or have a good play, a bat, or whatever in a game. And he's still talking and communicating with the guys and almost kind of a, a bell cow in a sense of like, hey, like, come on, guys, let's get this. Or if you guys get a block here, I'm going to make something happen. Like he's talking to the guys throughout the deal. It's, he's not in any way – starstruck or like just kind of the game is big and nerves and all that type stuff. He's just so relaxed back there. Like, man, just y'all give me this or that and I'm going to make a play with it and um, wants that ball. And, and I think that that's a, a trait and a mentality that shows you he's wired different and um, he's somebody that expects to perform well. And, and I think the guys are excited to see him do his thing and continue to grow. Thanks, Andrew. No problem. All right, that's all for today. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, I appreciate it.